Lex Luger. Your personal favorite beat by you, Lex Luger, of all time. Mm. Like we said before, the BMF with Ross, all see, of yeah. Look, I told you a lot of them, like mm-hmm. a lot of records, I don't even like. Mm. Day by day is the shizzle. What it do, what it is, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today we have a special episode featuring a special guest, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm joined by a producing legend, a trap beat originator, a multi-platinum hip-hop producer who produced for the likes of artists such as Juicy J, Rick Ross, Snoop Dogg, Jay-Z, just to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by the one and only Lex Luger, a.k.a. Smoked Out Luger. Hey, what's poppin', what's poppin'? <laughs> what's goody, bro? Man, cool, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for joining. For sure. Um, thanks for, you know what I'm saying, making this happen. I know your birthday just passed. How was the turn up? Uh, it was it was kind of a turn down. What? Yeah. You know, just with the family, kind of like, you know, at, at home. Yeah. Kids, you know. After like, what, like 21, 22 that's when that die down cool shit started yeah, happening with bro. the B-Day. Especially with kids, for mm-hmm. sure. And you appreciate them. Well, how old did you turn? 31, man. 31, just 31. So you yes. damn, so you you've been in the game for a minute. Yes, bro. You got in it at a young age, I should About say. 17, 16. Damn. Mm-hmm. Forever young. That's what's up, man. Um, so let's get straight into it, man. I said the smoked out Luger because the very mm-hmm. first time I even heard of the name Lex Luger was on the rubber band business one. I've Word. always, yeah, I've okay. always been a big fan of Juicy J. My brother put me on to him, and just just the way the beats used to knock. Yeah, with Juicy he the J. goat, man. Shout yeah. out to Juicy J. Man. Yeah, for sure. So, um, it seems like y'all you might have the most work with him more than any other artist. If I'm if I'm if I'm correct. Uh yeah, between him and Waka. Where me and Waka got a, a shitload of songs. Right, right, yeah. and you kind of started with Waka, right? Yep. Okay, correct. we're gonna, we gonna get into that. So with Juicy J for now, how did y'all even connect and build that brotherhood? Uh damn, I think he hit me up on Twitter. Mm. Yeah, simple DM, hit him back. Man, you a legend. Right. Let's get it. He flew out here to VA, which is crazy. Yeah. We linked up in the studios. Crazy man. Damn. Yeah. So just kind of reflecting then to now, back with Rubber Band Business 1 and 2, to now with the Stone of Night album that dropped in February, mm. just overall, all throughout all these years, 10 plus years, how's that journey been with him? Oh, just, uh, it's been a learning experience, man. Mm. Just uh, just getting to gyms, you know, um, and just learning from him, man, and just, you know, kind of like, it's an honor to work with him. I try not to be a fanboy. Right. Would, you know, like, but I grew up on his shit, so. Yeah. Everything he do is times 10 to me. You feel what right. I'm saying? So, right. But he, he teach me a lot, man, so I appreciate it. Yeah, and I mean, shit, he been out, bro. And Three. it's fun. It's fucking fun, man. Yeah. It's Uncle Juice, man. He fun as a bitch. So man. he really do be that turned up in real life, Oh, man. yeah, for yeah. sure, man. For sure. Bro, I went to a, a Juicy J and Project Pet concert. By Man, far the most, most ratchet shit I've ever been to, <laughs> in the best way possible. Pat, he That's had- That's what you get. That's yeah, what they give you. Pat had straight BBWs on the stage twerking, <laughs> all heavy hitters. Look, he said, woo, that's your type of time, ain't it? Look, all BBWs on the stage wilding, right? Yeah. And Juicy, uh, the DJ, I forgot the DJ name, but the, I'm going to show you the video. You're going to bug out after okay. this. So the DJ was fucking up his, his tracks. He was playing shit that he didn't want. Okay. So Juicy stopped the whole shit. He was like, hey man, play my shit, dog. He's like, play, play Tear the Club up, take sipping on some motherfucking scissor, yeah, play Ron Spinners. Juice. Yeah, yeah, and he was yeah. like, he was really spazzing on the DJ. So at one point, he got the whole crowd to say, hey, everybody say, fuck this nigga. And everyone said that shit to the DJ. Damn. I caught my DJ DJ cocaine because he starts a lot of fucking cocaine. And he can't never get shit right. Yo, bro, play the motherfucking songs, man. Play Tell the Club or play Who Run It, play Rod Spinner, play Sippin' Inside. Juice Hey, 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 stop the stop the Hey, man, play my fucking music, nigga. Play my fucking songs, dog. Quit bullshit. The fuck wrong with you, man? Man, 
play my fucking music, man. You playing the wrong shit, bro. I said play to the club, bro. Play rock spinners. Play sipping on some scissors. Somebody say, fuck this nigga. Fuck that nigga. Fuck that nigga. Play my music, bro. Let me check these things. Choose that weed. I was like, yeah, see, this is why he's a living legend. Yeah. And they've been out for a minute. Right? Yeah, like, bro. I, I remember high school, middle school, even yeah, maybe yeah. listening to Three Six Mafia. Ryan Spinners. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Did you have the uh did you have the shoes with the spinners in it? I didn't. You Damn, didn't. what were they called? I don't know, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Supers or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Go ahead. Man. I wanted them shits back in. No, I was fly, bro. I was I was I was a fly guy back in school. What LRG, was, academics, LRG? yeah. What was the kicks you had? Every every year we had that one pair of shoes for back to school. Um <laughs> the Kenny's. Kenny's the McGriff's. McGriff's? Yeah. Uh Ewan's. Mm. For sure, Jordans oh, for sure. Oh, so you really knew your shit. Dunks, yeah. SB, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah for I, sure. I was simple, like middle school, high school, elementary and middle. It was forces, but I got the yeah. high tops. I was never a fan of for low real? tops. Yeah, I always had the high tops. I did, I did high tops like in middle school, and then like mm -hmm. high school, I'm like, yo, I can't do. Got that. to the low because yeah. that's when the pants. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We Whole started, swag changed up. We started freaking the fist more. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you, what's the favorite? What's your personal favorite project that you did with Juicy? Ah oh, man, I can't say what I want to say, bro. Mm. Why it ain't out yet? <laughs> Classified. Uh, probably the new project. I'm gonna say the new project, the Stoners Night. Yeah, with um, uh, it was him, him and Wiz. Him and Wiz, yeah. Right. And just because creatively, like I've just grown so much mm. with my music, mm. so I'm happy with the work that I put out now. Mm. I was young at first. Right. So it was me learning and trying. Right. And not even knowing why why at one point in my life, like why people fuck with my beats. But like now I'm for sure I know why. I know where I want to go creatively. Mm. You know, but like certain records, like I hate that I've produced. Really? Yeah, bro. Why so? Because it's, it's just like immature work. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Just, but, but you were younger too. You said you, when did you start first working with Juicy? You was like, what, 17, 18? Yeah, about well, maybe eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, I mean, our train of thought changes drastically every year from sure. eighteen to twenty-five. Like that's twenty-five is when like uh, the part of our brain with decision making is fully developed. Oh, so wow. that's why every year from eighteen to twenty-five, you just feel like you become more of a man because twenty-five. That's when you hit your peak. Yeah, you know that's saying? crazy. So um, you said you you like it more now. So um, how was it different from Rubber Bed Minutes One and Two to the Stoners Night? How was your your beats on the uh, project different? Uh, just more time, mm. more thought. Mm. You know, sonically where I want to go, how I want people to feel when they hear it. I wanted to like with this project, I wanted to take it back, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just kind of give people that that oh nine feel, right. two thousand ten party feel. You so, know, drugs, girls. You yeah. Know. So at one point, did you feel like you left that feel? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. I was trying to like cater to the fans and like, which I love my fans, right. but it's just like I went through like I went through a whole the baby stage. I call it the baby stage because mm -hmm. everybody's like same flow. You ever seen that? Like mm -hmm. they say the baby uses the same. Flow. Right, right. It's not. It's just him. It's his sound. Right. And I went through that. Like people are like, oh, Lex, all your beats sound the same. Like I used to get the comments and shit. Like damn. damn. Yeah. So that's why I did that way for Wale uh -huh. and Jeremiah. Right. Round of applause. It's a different sound. So uh -huh. like this, this Stoner's Night is kind of the same thing. It's like it's a different direction from what I. Mm -hmm. The same recipe. Me and Southside call it like a recipe. It's just a you go in there, you don't even have to look at the screen. We could just mm -hmm. click. You know you, what I mean? You got back to beat. your original cadence. Yeah. So when you did that way in round of applause to cater to um, like a, a different sound. For a different audience, mm -hmm. if you would, mm -hmm. um, do you feel that was effective or looking yeah. back at it? Okay. Yeah, um, I try to do that now with every record mm -hmm. that I do. Gotcha. Just you know, grab something from techno or just just take different elements and 
you know, put them in my beat so I can grab a different fan base. You know right. what I mean? You know, ah. People would be like, oh, man, you, he really took out the time to yeah. put this little detail in there. Mm, so it's important to, you know, um, still be true to yourself, but but reach that, you know, just, just step outside your comfort zone, I should say. With yeah. anything in life, stepping outside your comfort zone is how you grow. That's how you That's get right. better. That's right. So that is the same thing with producing, with producing uh, beats. Yeah. Copy, copy. Yeah, same shit. Bet. So we're going we gonna to circle back to the beats. Um, we recorded live, for those who don't know, we are recording live from the 757. We're in the motherfucking building, Virginia, right? Yeah, yeah. Timberland Studio, legendary studio. Legendary, yeah. Fucking beautiful ambiance, by the way. I've never been in anything like this in my life. Yeah, like, this, this is crazy. This is fucking breathtaking. So let me ask you something, right? About the 757. God damn. I love the 757, bro. Yeah, bro. I do. It's one of my favorite places on the East Coast. Um, but let me ask you, 757 has produced three of the most legendary producers to mm. hit the game. And Timberland, Pharrell Williams, and yourself. Each one of y'all were innovating Appreciate producers. It. Thank you. What the fuck is it about the 757 that produces these great musical masterminds and even can throw push and clips in the yeah. mix? Yep. Some of the greatest bars to roam the earth. Yep. What the fuck is it about 757? Yo, I think it's... Honestly, I think it's um, just we in the middle. Mm. So you got New mm. York. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. got Florida right here at the bottom. You know, right. everybody, like, we're right in the middle. Mm. So we get the go-go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We hear that. I heard that growing up. I yeah. heard the country songs growing up. I heard just everywhere. You know what I mean? Because right. we, we don't have, like, a... It's not like New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. New York is a whole lifestyle. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Virginia's different, man. We kind of, we're right in the middle. Right. It's like um, military, you know, a lot yeah. of military people come yeah. in and out. So everybody's kind of here. Yeah. So we just get that mesh up. And I think that's what um, brings the creatives out. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, that's what makes for real so unique. If yeah. we're, you know. And it's crazy you mentioned that because that just brought back a memory. I was watching the Drink Champs interview with Pharrell, mm -hmm. and he mentioned Go Go as well. How like oh, he man. heard Go Go growing up, like yeah. the exact same. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, layout how you just laid. He said the same thing. So that's very interesting. Me being from Maryland, I kind of feel the same with that as well. Because Maryland's two hours from Philly, yeah. three hours from here, four yeah. hours from New York. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. So you get the best of both worlds. Um, damn, DMV, that's what's up. DMV, baby. Yeah, 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 sir. All the way. That's what's up. Man. I think, I, honestly, also, I think being on the beach helps as well. Just that yeah, for beach sure. ambiance just brings so much creativity. It's you know what I'm saying? something about that, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why, like, people on the West Coast in LA, they just got, like, that calm, creative vibe because yeah. they're on the fucking beach all day. Facts. Like, you can't beat that shit. Facts, facts. Um, and it even goes beyond... Uh, music with the seven five seven, Alan Iverson and Mike Vick. <laughs> some actors out there, I think. Yeah, yeah bro, yeah. There's, there's some talent, man. Innovators. And then last but certainly not least, I gotta admit, I've never had a bad time with a seven five seven chick. Never, Word. never. I love seven five seven. I hear that. They're I hear that. On the whole East Coast, Philly, New York, DC, whatever. Seven five seven is top two in my book. Man. Yeah, we got the Chili's out here, man. Easy. The chill, chill women, man. The chillies, you know, yeah. The I like chilies. that. I'm start saying that. The chillies, I'm gonna start saying that. Shout out to the seven five seven women for sure. Yeah. All right, so you growing up in the area, seeing these two producing <laughs> legends, Tim and Pharrell, Tim mm -hmm. and Pharrell, and uh, Teddy Riley, and Teddy Riley. Yes, yes. Yep. Oh, it's you know it's crazy. I had him on the script. The only reason why I didn't say that is because he was in New York at first. True. So True. is he? Was he from VA? Then went to New York. Then nah, came back I think to VA? you're right. I think he's originally from, from New, New York. But yeah. then he came out here to VA, to Virginia Beach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I did see that on uh, the uh, Hip Hop Evolutionary show on um, Netflix. Yeah. Okay. They gotta, so if if we weren't here at this studio, we'd be at his old studio. Where? Yeah, Black Label Studio, dope studio. That's what's up. Do you know? So did he come out here because he saw the talent that was coming out of here? Nah, I don't know. Honestly, yeah. I don't yeah. know the reason. All right, I got to do more research on that. So you being in an area, growing up in an area, Teddy Riley, Pharrell, and Timberland, you mm. see these legendary producers right down the street from you growing up. What was that, uh, what was that like? What was that influence like? Uh, honestly, it wasn't a huge impact at, mm. at a young age because mm -hmm. I just wasn't thinking like that. Um, and then when I got a little older, got into music, of course, Pharrell and Timberland stood mm -hmm. out, but not, it wasn't because they were from here. 
Word. It was just sonically, they just yeah. stood out to me. Right. I didn't. I never saw them here growing up. Mm. I think I saw Magoo at the mall like mm-hmm. as a kid. Yeah. I don't even know if people know remember Magoo. Most people don't. Timberland, Timberland <laughs> yeah. Magoo. Most people like Magoo. Who, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not some '90s babies. Well, yeah. But everything after that, now nah, they're completely lost. In exactly. The sauce. So who? Uh, so when you did, what got you into the music? First off. Uh, man. I don't know. I think I always was into music, mm. and um, I watched Drumline, mm. and I really wanted to play drums after I saw fucking Drumline. <laughs> Bro, after I saw Drumline, I grabbed a cardboard box. Yeah. <laughs> I grabbed two sticks from outside yep. off the tree and started playing on that shit. Bro, facts. That Same was... shit, bro. Yeah. Same shit, I swear to God. I would look. I would take the the blinds. You know, uh, the shit yeah, yeah, yeah. The tw- that twist the blinds and yeah. hit on books and shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's yeah. a good stick. They're real light and they and yeah, they bounce. Bro. Yeah, I know that made a good. So sound. that's what that's what introduced me into like drums, mm. and then like you know I started playing for the church. Mm. Then I got into hip hop. Always was into hip hop, but yeah. I got really deep into it. Mm-hmm. And then I you know just decided I wanted to make beats. Right. Got a, a program on a PlayStation. It was a game actually. It's called Music Generator. Real shit. Wait, so you made yeah. beats on a PlayStation? Yep, on God. I swear How to God. the fuck did that take place? It, I just, I found the game. Mm-hmm. So, oh, oh it was day. a game that actually. Yeah, oh, it's man. called Music Generator. Look it up. Right. And I had like the second edition. Mm. And um, yeah, I used to try to make beats like grinding, like just mm. straight drums, just boom. Yeah. Dun, 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 you know what I mean? And it just Damn. took off from there. Damn, so it started on a PlayStation game. Yes, bro. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Humble beginnings, you know what I'm saying? It ain't got to always start from the, you know what I'm saying, the yeah, biggest no way. whatever, whatever. It almost never does. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. it does sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, is it- It's never the same. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? If it does start off at that high level, I mean, is it truly organic? Like I said, with the podcast, it was one microphone, a split jack with the headphone, someone sitting on the other side, and but but you couldn't tell me shit. That's what it takes. Yeah, with your PlayStation. Couldn't nobody tell you shit. That's that was right. the best thing since sliced bread to yeah. you. My uncle had made beats. It's crazy. And he lives in New York. He's just, mm-hmm. now he's from here. Mm-hmm. He's If you talk to him, you would swear out he's from New York. Mm-hmm. I, I love you, Uncle Chum. Yeah. I mean, but, listen, um, New York can have an influence on you. I know yeah, plenty heavy, of people heavy. who moved to New York. Yeah, we straight. I know plenty of people who moved to New York and you would swear they're from there by the way they talk. Right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, he, he used to make beats when he was younger. Mm. So um, he came down and. He was like, Lex, let me hear your beats. Mm-hmm. I played him the beat from mm-hmm. the PlayStation. He yeah. was like, you made this shit off a video right, game? Like, right. what the? F-? Yeah. He was just blown away. He couldn't believe it, man. Yeah. And um, that's when I knew, like, I was, you know, I had my niche. I was mm. different. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And I feel like that's why I stood out in producing because, well, in production because when we grew up, it was MPCs and keyboards. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And right. I just came with my laptop and mm. one program and yeah. was making shit that sounded just like Pharrell and mm. Tim and Scott. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was better than some people who may have had the whole shebang. Same, right, and it might have been the same situation with your two jacks. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Your, yeah. your shit just sounded, even though you was working with that, mm-hmm. you still the outcome was this. It was it was natural, real right. natural and yeah. organic. So when you did, so when you did find your niche, did you have any type of uh, Influences that you kind of looked up to, or was everything just straight from Lex Luger? Nah, mad, mad influences, mad influences. Like who? Um, uh, mainly Kanye. Mm. Mainly Kanye. Uh, Lil John, heavy. Um, Three Six Mafia production. Yeah. Uh, just Blaze, mm. fucking yeah. Just heat Blaze? makers, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, I used to love the heat makers, bro. Mm. That Dipset shit, yeah, when it came out. Oh my god, smashing, bro. Did they do the Dipset anthem? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. sound, that yeah. sound. Yeah, 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 bro. That's the national anthem. That's what's up. So let me let me ask you something. You mentioned grinding. Yeah, classic. Let me let me let me bring some. <sighs> This is my second time ever smoking on a day by day podcast. Fuck it, I'm having an Elon Musk moment right yeah, now. Yeah, bro, come on. We eat, we easing our mind. We self medicating. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's all right. So, first time you heard grinding, let me bring back some nostalgia real quick. 
All right. First time you heard grinding, what the fuck was that like? Because that was the first beat I ever did. Everyone did the... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the beat. That's, that's yeah. Everyone did that on the table, right? Yep. Your first time hearing grinding, what was that like? Ah oh, man, it was, it blew my mind, you know. It was it was mind blowing. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this. It was like I heard grinding before I heard it. Mm. Like you know how you in school uh -huh. and everybody like you heard this and yeah. Everybody was doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was oh, like, yeah, yo, what the, the, the fuck? Song. Yeah, do, 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 do. yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Uh, so then I had caught on later. I was like, damn, this shit is mom. I never heard nothing like this, ever. But I had, you know, yeah. when you're younger, you don't understand of it. Course, but like, of course, but still, that shit was different. Yeah, bro, it was, it was nothing like that, bro. From still to this day, backyard to yard. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Quick sidebar: What uh, Pusha T's brother? I'm not, what's his name? Malice. Malice. Does he still rap? Yeah. Uh, do you know why he like? I should say, do you know why he fell back? Yeah, because rap is this industry is crazy, man. You know, like the crazy story. He had like. I never met Malice, mm. but I had a group that I was with called VABP, and um, they were coming up. They got you, a mixtape you, with Juicy J. I was going to say, you did a mixtape with Juicy J. Yeah. Okay. They were Young like, niggas are taking over. Yeah, that okay. was the game. Yeah. That was the game. So they had met with him, and um, you know they were telling me, they you know, come back and, mm -hmm. you know, we talking about the whole session, and um, they were like, man, he kind of broke down. In the session, like he had heard one of my beats and just you know the songs and shit, and it was just so dark to him. Mm. You know what I mean? And just and it's crazy now that I think about it because I guess he knew where his state of music was going. Mm. It's just dark. It's yeah. just really you got a you got a side of hip hop that's really dark. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, and he just he he don't fuck with that side. Mm. Period. Period. And I, I, you know, I understand why. Yeah, for sure. I was ready to say, but it's honestly, a balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for him because he knew what was best for him. Right. He right, didn't right, let right. he didn't let the industry or the way that the industry was going, you know, uh, put him in a black hole. Yeah, it takes its toll on me, man. Honestly, mm -hmm. if we, you know, going that, if we going down that deep, what's the grimiest part about it? Uh, probably. I mean, the business is a headache, mm -hmm. but just the mental. Shit that you have to go through on a daily basis of like social media and mm. critics and like what you can and can't do. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like who talking about you? Or what? Mm. Who asking for what? Like that shit. So we want to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I I get it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm on I'm on the outside looking in, so I see the comments towards people, mm. and then when you click on something on IG, the first fifty be out of the first fifty, like thirty five be on the same. Uh, yeah. The targets aimed at the same spot. Yeah. Right. So it's not as easy to like just block that out. I'm assuming. No. Mm. Nah. It's like I can't unsee it, and you mm. know how quick it's the mind and the brain. It's crazy because I could like see something and just not really see it, but yeah. I saw it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's right. Like, God right. damn. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, like me and my manager. I always tell my managers, anybody I work with, like, man, like y'all gotta. Be on my social media, cause I can't be on it all the time. Mm. I, I can't. I can't do it. So you have them like okay. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah, but it's good for like man. Just I, I've linked with so many people, bro. Like yeah. Um, any artist, bro. I was just DMing Ross. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, for those who don't know, Lex did the BMF beat by Ross, which is fucking insane. Appreciate it, bro. Fucking insane. Yeah, like like artists like look got it. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just a DM away. Um uh Vizo, I swear Vizo. Mm. It's a DM away. So when you first got in the game, was it that uh was it like that uh like easy I should say? No. Uh yeah. I mean when you hot, when you hot. Right, right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, it's, right, right, right. The motherfuckers calling you. Mm -hmm. Man, motherfuckers used to call my phone. And all I see is the number. Hey, Lex, da, da, they just talking to me. Da, 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 da. I don't even know who this is, Dang. but I can hear it, right? Because I'm, you know, I grew up, and I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm on the phone with DJ Khaled. 
Mm. Like DJ Khaled just called my phone. Like, right. And I'm in awe talking to him. And I'm like, all right, cool. We're going to work. You know, I'm motivated. Yeah. As soon as I get off the phone, I know what I got to do. Yeah. But I get off the phone and I like call my pops and shit because I'm young. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, pops, I just talked to DJ Khaled. <laughs> like, he just called my phone. Um, but now it's like I reach out to younger artists because I'm 31 mm-hmm. now. And they're like, oh, Lex, you a le- you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You a pioneer. You were like. Right. Passing the torch. That's what's up. Yeah, that's just crazy, man. So let's let's rewind. Coming up. I mentioned earlier uh, Walker. So was that the first artist that you got the attention of? Yes. How did you do that? I'm going to say that that's the first artist I got the attention of that believed in me. Mm. That that took me for more than just a beat maker. Mm. For, for just a beat. What do you what led to him believing in you that separated him from the rest? I I don't know. I that's that's the crazy part. Mm. We just I hit him up on MySpace. <laughs> this is MySpace days, mind you. Uh-huh. Hit him up on MySpace. I sent him a gang of beats. And um, you know, in the email he put your number, mm. whatnot. Yeah. So he called me, he like, bro. He was like, "Man, you made me find my sound. I'm mm. about to, I'm about to do a whole album with this sound." Yeah, I swear to God. Damn. That that yeah, that moment hit me, bro. That yeah. shit just hit me. That and I was like, "Yo, shit, about to, I'm about to enter a whole nother world." That's when you knew. <laughs> That's when you knew. That's when the hands came out red pill or blue pill. Yeah, yeah. I up. think I I had a song with Lil Scrappy at the time. Mm-hmm. Now this isn't no problem with Scrappy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this is later on, but mm-hmm. I, I had a song with him at the time. Uh, you know, a couple other artists that were coming up in that time, mm-hmm. you know, in that sound. Yeah. But um, me and Walker just connected. He flew me out there, stayed there, and um, we cooked up. I met Southside, uh, OJ the Juice Man. Met the whole mm-hmm. Brick Squad gang. Right. And they, you know, welcomed me in like a family, bro. And it was a lot after that. Damn. So let me ask you this. Whether it was from them or from anyone else, who was that one person that you caught bopping their head to your beat that told you they feeling your shit that really just fucked you up? Uh, She was like, damn, they a fan of, they, they like my shit? What the fuck is the world coming to? <laughs> yeah, all right, so there's two moments. There's two mm-hmm. moments, bro. Like when I was younger, I had I was doing the Walker mixtapes and the Juicy J. I mean, not Juicy J. O, uh, OJ the OJ. Juice Man, yeah, yeah mixtapes. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Juice Man. Yeah. I had a homie named Real. Shout out to Real. Um, I used to ride around just getting high, listening to it. Mm. And he just turned it down one day. He was like, bro, I've never heard nothing like your shit before. This coming from OJ? No, no, no. This coming from my homie. Your homie. This, now, this, this is before man. I oh, okay, okay. blew, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, okay, this is before okay, it really okay. took off. Yeah. So, now this is my bro. Like, he don't... He ain't going to bullshit you. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's certain mm-hmm. shit that he done heard from me that he don't fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like, he... Really turned the shit down, like bro. I never like you gotta your shit different, bro. Mm. So that shit hit me. And then um, the day I met Kanye, Jay Z and Beyonce were there, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm playing Ye beats. So he's like, all right. So he picked his beats, put them to the side. Yeah. So he's like, man, you got some for for uh, for Beyonce? I was mm. like, yes. Right. <laughs> Even if you didn't. But I yeah, did. Yeah, That's the okay, thing. Okay, I swear okay. I didn't, okay, bro. Back. I was straight trapped out. I yeah, was nigga all yeah. gangster shit. But what the shit. fuck you going to say? No? Yeah, <laughs> right. come on, now. So, but look, this is the crazy part. He was like, yeah. He was like, you know she like that ghetto shit anyway. I swear to God, bro. Right. This is his words, bro. <laughs> That's lit. <late. laughs> so I played the records and I'm playing them and Beyonce's bobbing her shit and Jay-Z. So, like, that's when I... Mm. I was like, all right, I got some. The king and the queen. Yeah, this is young Lex too. This is young. How Lex. old was you? Twenty, maybe. Oh, maybe, shit. maybe, bro. God damn. Yeah. <sighs> shit was so. It just it just went so fast, bro. Mm. So let me ask you something about twenty eighteen, all the younger ages. You mentioned earlier, MySpace is how you reached out to Flocker, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so seeing 
where we at now and kind of uh, judging it with where we were before. If you was a young and up and coming producer, fresh in the game, right? You mm. got substance to you, but you don't have a buzz. What's a way you would market yourself to get to the artists that you want to work with, like how you did with MySpace and Waka? Say it again. If you was up and coming now with no buzz, how okay. you was before you linked okay. with Waka? Okay. Today, how it would still you, is like that? Kind how of, would you? I always, yourself? I always got that attitude though. Mm. I always got that attitude. What, what attitude? Just me. I don't have no name in the industry. Mm. I don't have no plaques. Mm. I don't. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm, I'm reaching out to artists like that. I swear to God, yo, I'm mm. trying to link with artists like that. Right. Like I already got in my mind because it's a younger generation. They don't know who I am. Right. That's the attitude I go at it. Mm. That's cr- that yo. I, that just reminded me of That's crazy. a clip when Big was talking about how Puff would tell him one thing: when you get in the industry, you still got to be hungry like you was before the deal yeah, every day. Bro. Yeah, that shit's day. hard to do once you get, you know, you get to a certain point. You like, yeah. you know, I'm good. Bro. Right, nah. right. Damn. Yeah. So what was one time when you caught yourself like that? Oh uh, man, I was living in Atlanta. I never forget. Oh my God. I was living in Atlanta, bro. And um, I was just on my high horse, man. Mm. Just popping my shit just every day on Instagram. Just, you know, blowing a bag, bro. Just, yeah. You know, I had two daughters at the time. They get anything they want. We, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just yeah. going crazy, bro. Um, And the That Way record had a sample in it. Mm. Uh, it's Curtis Mayfield sample. So Curtis Mayfield and them reached out years later. We want a piece of the, we want a piece of this record. We're suing him. Mm. They garnished all my royalties. Damn. I swear to God. And uh, that shit just hit me left field. I was like, fuck. Damn. You know, I love these royalties coming in. We yeah. need producers need royalties. Right. That's how we get paid, you feel me? Um so, you know, any young cats watching this, man, if you sample some shit, get it cleared. Mm. Get the shit cleared, bro. Just reach out to whoever it is. Just make sure it's okay. If they want their percentage, give it to them off, off rip. Just do right. it. Just talk to them. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I didn't know at the time. I was young. Right. And I thought the label was going to take care of it. I, thought it's, I think yeah. it was Def Jam. Mm. And they didn't. And that Damn. shit bit me in the ass, bro. Damn. <laughs> That's what's up. But I paid my dues. Yeah, Shout out to it, Curtis Mayfield. Yeah. Live and learn. Live and learn. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like when I um when I first started uploading these on YouTube, my little brother, he does my intro beats. And he used one beat that had a sample on it. And YouTube was like, nah, you can't post it. Yeah, this. for sure. They on your ass. YouTube. I was like, I was like, damn, it works like that. <laughs> so I could imagine yeah. being hit like that, but having actual money involved. Yes, sir. You know yes, sir, bro. These are these are checks. These are big checks, bro, mm. coming at the time. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just enjoying that. Right. So I wasn't preparing for that hit. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So it really humbled me. And, uh, you know, now I don't sample shit. Right. <laughs> Fuck it. All that shit from scratch. That's what's up, man. So another question for a producer who may be looking to get their foot in the door. Do you think it's better for them to put... Uh, some type of their own twist on some type of original vibe or beat or just go completely original? Ah, man. I feel like even if you think you're going completely original, mm-hmm. you're still recycling something. Something. It's, it's, it's an inspiration. It's just human being. You know what I mean? Yeah. Naturally, it's what we yeah. do. We yeah. just take it in and throw mm-hmm. it back out. It's yeah. Like, you know, but I, I, I say try to go as original as you can. Maybe... You know, I've been in the game for a little minute, so I can like reinvent something, mm. like a sound, like an R and B sound right. or something like that, right. and present it to somebody, and it'd be a little different than somebody new coming up. Mm. You know what I mean? They probably gonna shut the door on it. Yeah. So when you first came in, which one did you do? As far um, as the, I really I tried to, I went with what I love to hear, like what I what I like to listen to. Mm-hmm. That's what I wanted to put out, and. You know, it's it's been like that since then. Like whatever I'm into at a time, that's what I'm making. Mm. You and know it, what I mean? And it turned out to be um a a game changing trap beat. 
Now, trap beat. Yeah, trap beat. Let's talk about trap beats. When did when was trap beat even presented to you? Uh, I don't. Uh, and how did you like? How did you even accept it? Like, what? What? Like, how was that right. whole experience like? I don't know. I I don't know, bro. Like, cause you know the trap is like a it's the environment, right? You know what I'm saying. So like. Just being labeled as the guy who makes the the uh, theme music, mm -hmm. if you will, for that. Um, I don't know. It just got stamped. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't go for it though. You didn't. Nah, cause like I said, it's just like I said. If I was listening to Heat Makers, mm -hmm. and I'm in my New York vibe, I'm on my Dipset shit. I'm on my D Block shit. Right. That's what I'm making. Mm. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. I just I love making music. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just it, that's just how it is. So the the southern shit just locked in with Waka and that whole sound, just that hardcore rock kind of yeah. hip hop. You know yeah. what I mean? Just kind of took off, and we just ran with that. Mm. So in my mind, I'm like, all right. It's supply and demand. You know what I mean? I got to yeah. make more of these. Oh, uh, okay. I, I got to make more of these. So your initial plan was even going into it like, this is what it's going to be. This yeah, once it was become. stamped, for sure. Uh -huh. Once it was stamped, like, right. this is your track, this is your sound. All yeah. right, I'm going to just go with it. Damn. Yeah. And, and so when was this? When the trap beat even came around? That was, what, 2010, 2011? Yeah, but see, okay, so I think the start of it was like the all the way turned up. Like um, okay. the Travis Porter yeah. kind of vibe, the futuristic, tra the J Money. I've always said Travis Porter was ahead of their time. Yeah, and bro. Was, Shout like, out like, to Travis Porter. Yeah, man. for real. Because they Strap. shit was, it wasn't like when, when like how it is now with like Meg and like, it's, it's shit that's strictly for that. Yeah. At that time, Travis and them was the only ones. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Now. Yeah, young as hell. Too yeah. Really young as fuck, yeah. Man. Now that's the main thing. Yep. Shit. You get some shorties and start busting it. Yeah. You that's got a seller. Fucking you good. <laughs> yeah. For real. Damn. That's what's up, though. Yeah, and it, but there's room for everybody, man. Like, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do, whatever sound you want to make, whatever fan base you want to go for, there's you think there's only one of you, man. There's a lot of people out there like you that like whatever you like. Mm -hmm. So you always can build something with that. You can build a connection with other people. You can make with, money with your core audience. That's right. That's yeah. right, man. The ones that really fucks with you. That's right. Like you like it's not people that just you know. Present, but just to be With present, but not really present. Yeah, nah, mm. it's people that really looking toward, looking forward to anything you got going. Yep. Shout out to the core audience out there. So, the trap beat. Um, you said let's rewind. Let's go to when you said it first started with Roscoe Dash and Travis Porter and them um, mm -hmm. to where it is now. Even Ti, like you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ti. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Early Ti. So we can exactly let's go oh five when Trap B really first came around to where mm -hmm. it is now. Mm -hmm. What is it like for you seeing that revolution and what do you like and dislike about it? Uh, man, I love it. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't really have. Cause it is what it is. It it is violence. It is drugs. It is guns. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the environment. It's an environment. Yeah. So it's a way for young kids to get that pain out. Mm. You know, they can run to the mic and potentially get away from it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stay out the street in, in a hole. You know what I'm saying? Um, if even if you're producing, just. Stick, take, take your pain, whatever you're going through, whatever you see, just put it in your music, man. Mm. And um, you know, you you never know what you can make back. That's what's so up. I, I love it. I love it. I would yeah. say I would be like, you know, a pro. Like, I don't like the way trap music is like, cause you know they got the whole like smoking ops and like it's really, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it went, it turned into drill music. Yeah, I was gonna say it absorbed drill. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a real dark side, like we were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. But let's just see. It is what it is, man. That's what's up. Who's a uh, party foul? <laughs> <laughs> who's a um? Who's like a more new producer that you that you really fucking with? Oh man, it's a it's a lot, bro. I really fuck with Chase the Money. I mean, but he I knew, you know what I mean. He been around mm -hmm. for a minute. But I fuck with Chase the Money, Pierre, Pierre Bourne, yeah, uh, Wheezy. 
Okay, yeah, Weezy on the beat. Yeah, Weezy fires a bitch. Um, the Detroit producers, man. Detroit going crazy. Yeah, I like that sound. Yeah, that energy. Sound hard. Shout yeah. out to energy. I I talk to energy. Um, it's a lot of young kids out here, bro. That's really mm. making some dope shit. Mm. Kanye been fucking with a lot of like the artists that's on Donda, like uh-huh. with the producers and the writers, and they a lot of young folks. Like who? I, I'm, I'm not even. Uh, sure. Case. It's a guy named Casey Pluto. Mm. Um, uh, Weinler, I think the kid name is. They just kids. You got a sound SoundCloud kids. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's like a sound, yeah. like, I don't listen to SoundCloud. Right. I didn't know SoundCloud was still operating. Bro, that's, <laughs> listen, bro, my kids, because my daughters are 11 and 12. Uh-huh. Every artist that they get up on yeah. is off SoundCloud. What? Yes, bro. Yo, it's, it's the they way, say bro. life is a full fucking yeah. circle. Life is a yeah. full fucking circle. <laughs> yeah. We're back at SoundCloud. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. SoundCloud, man, people will be... Kids are becoming millionaires, bro. Like yeah. little Uzi Vert and what? Yeah, SoundCloud's is shit. That's crazy. We done got back to SoundCloud, y'all. Yeah, bro. It's, it's a world I haven't. I can't dig into it. Yeah. I just can't. Yeah, yeah. But it's there. Did, did you use that at all? SoundCloud. Like, I did. I did. Right. When it, when SoundCloud was SoundCloud yeah. used to be Spotify at one point. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, and, and anything that was obtainable that I could reach. Mm-hmm. I was using it. Mm. You know what I mean? MySpace, right. I'm trying to get it out there. It was right. a, I think it was a website called like Beat Click or some shit like that. Vibe Beats. You ever heard of Vibe Beats? I haven't. Yeah, it was like Sound Click. That's Sound what Click. it was called. Mm. Sound Click. A lot of folks probably know about Sound Click. Damn. But I used to go up there, put your beats up there. You could sell your beats. You know, when you're going through, you like, Two for fifty dollar stage, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you can yeah. put them up there. Yeah, you know the price don't went up on the brick. <laughs> yeah. the price on the brick and definitely went up though. I re- yeah, I remember them days, man. Yeah. Shout out to them days. Man. Listen, you mentioned Kanye earlier, right? Did you did you peep any of the new uh, Kanye Genius uh, documentary on Netflix? Nah, I was just talking to my partner about it. I want to wait till it all comes out. I got some shit. Up there, I, I only I can't even talk about it. I can't uh, even talk about. Uh, it. We'll talk about it after this. Now. Yeah, we'll but this. <laughs> I want to wait till the whole shit come out. Mm. I, all, so all three just dropped. I just finished it last night. Okay, all right. It's three parts. They out. Now. Okay, all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I gotta watch it there. I asked that because the title, of course, is called Genius. Yeah. So you being someone who, um, from the from from the creativity of your own self for one, and from some legendary musicians in general that you've crossed paths with crossed paths with yeah um those musicians just taking all that in in your humble opinion what components go into making somebody to be classified a musical genius um uh, somebody who brings something new to the table mm just something, you know, say if we talking like Einstein or something like that, you know, like a real genius. Yeah. You know, like they bring like a new algorithm, you know, it's right. some new math problem or some right. shit like that. Same thing in music. If you bring like a whole new, like how I said, like me and Southside, man, just a whole new idea, mm-hmm. a way of making music. Just bringing one computer in there, fucked up as it is, and just making the most amazing sounding shit, you know what mm. I mean? In the in a pro in a ninety nine dollar program, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? You got seven thousand dollar keyboards out here. Right. <laughs> that they're buying. Right. You know, or like when I was a kid I thought I had to have that shit. It ain't the car, it's the driver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's litty. Mm-hmm. So name to get a better picture, uh I, I like demonstrations. Uh uh-huh. name a couple uh, persons you would consider a musical genius, excluding yourself. That'll be too easy. I appreciate it, though. Uh-huh. Um, yay, of course. Of course, bro. Agreed. It's obvious, you know what I mean? Like I, I could go on about yay. When you see the doc, you gonna that's going to reassure it even more. I mean, you worked with him, so you definitely know, but yeah. that doc was on some shit like, what the fuck? Like, the making of some of his shits? It was crazy. You know, like, when you're younger... You you kind of idolize mm-hmm. people. Yeah. So as I got older, my it changed. 
I did, you know, I don't. Not saying he don't inspire me, but I I just don't idolize him like I did when I was right. younger. Right. So it's it's just it's a lot different for me now. But um, from him and music to fashion to you know I could go on you know about how he's a genius. But uh, Swiss Beats. Swizzy. Yeah, I think I think what he brought to the table, you know what I mean? Like what he's built with that. Is amazing. That whole Rough Riders D. Yeah, that's shit. just amazing, bro. What Jesus. he's built, his wife now, and like just mm -hmm. the records that you know, the, yeah. the name he's built for himself. I think mm -hmm. he went back to college. Shout out to him for that. Mm -hmm. Got a degree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I really look up to Swiss Beats. Um, shit. On just musically. Yeah, just musical genius for now. Uh. Kanye Cause if Swiss. we was talking genius, genius, we could go yeah, for fucking right. days. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, for real, for sure, mm. for real. That's that's obvious too. Yeah. With with the music and fashion. Um, shout out to Chad Hugo too, man. Mm. He don't, you know, a lot of people mention for real, but they right. forget. There's a, there's a fifty percent of for real. Yeah, nerd was. Yeah, yeah Chad. Yeah, shout out nerd. to Chad, bro. He said there's a fifty percent of. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Yeah. Chad is the yeah. shit. Um. Who else, bro? Hold on, hold on. Boosie Collins. Boosie Collins. Yeah. You consider Boosie Collins a musical genius? I do. I fuck with that answer, my friend. I do. I yeah. fuck with that answer. <laughs> I'd rather be with you is one of my favorite songs ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just and you want to know what's crazy, yo? Yeah. I And I say that because I went to a, a BMI award recently. Uh-huh. And he won an award mm -hmm. for... The Childish Gambino, you know, he sampled, right, you know. Right, right, right. And he came out there with the star glasses on. He was still booty? Yeah, bro. Yeah. And I was like, yo, yeah, he's created something that's lasted mm. a, a, almost a lifetime. It probably will. Yeah. You know, so. The way he did the different, uh, like, melodies with his voice. Yeah, it's, it's nothing sounding like yeah, him, Yeah, I want to be with you, baby. Yeah, Like, bro. what the fuck? <laughs> it's a, he's a whole character, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that, I mean, that's Quincy? Shit. Quincy yeah, Jones, yeah, a fucking oh, genius, course, bro. Of course, How could I forget him? Stevie Wonder. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Stevie Damn. Was up there. I was watching a doc um, about, like, some type of, like, um all black Woodstock type event that took place yeah. in Harlem in like the sixties, I believe. Okay. I forgot what it was called. It was a it was a hell I think of I a, heard of that. Yeah. It was a hell of a doc. It was real good. Okay. And Stevie Wonder performed. And this is young Stevie with the uh, mm -hmm. with the high top fade yeah. and the shades. I didn't even know that Stevie for until I got older. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. Look back, right? But. Me neither. And when I saw that, I was fascinated, and I was like, "Yeah, he's definitely a musical genius." Because in that doc, yo, mind you, I mean. The dude is fucking blind. Yeah, fact. This nigga is playing, all due respect, OG, this nigga is playing the fucking piano, <laughs> standing up, turning around, playing it backwards. Oh, man. Yeah. Go, goes to the drum set, start playing on the drums, grabs a guitar, start playing, uh, and he's fucking blind, bro. Yeah, that's that's sent, that's sent from somewhere, what bro. What the fuck? That's, be, that's beyond us, you know what yeah. I mean? That's, it's a gift, man. Yeah, seriously. And him yeah. being blind reminds me of another impairment musical genius that I thought of earlier. I got it's it's a bit of a curveball, but Beethoven. Yep. <laughs> yep. Dude was deaf. So is he black? No, he. Was, I don't know. Is he? You know, there's like a whole like. It's a there's lot. There's a whole thing of like, is is he black or not? It's a lot of white America that's really black. It's a lot of white America that's really black. Yeah. That shit would yeah. not surprise me. I just yeah. didn't know if you know anybody else because you got people that's like, oh no, nah, he was you know like really uh, hard on it. Yeah. Was Beethoven a bruh? Yeah, look it up. I don't know. I mean, yo, I mean that level of musical genius. You, I mean, you would think it would come from someone with rhythm if they can't hear, right? Yeah, and we got the rhythm. <laughs> right, <laughs> Beethoven might have been a nigga, bruh. Oh, might have been, bro. Oh shit, but that's still fascinating. Regardless, I put him as a musical genius as well because he's deaf. Yeah, that's and amazing. Doing bro. this yeah. shit. That's mm -hmm. literally what the fuck music is to ninety nine point nine 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 percent of everyone is fucking sound. Mm -hmm. And you well, make look, it. the deeper I got into like music, like I was like, you know, heavy on learn. I wanted to learn as much as I could about music. Mm -hmm. Like that shit's like vibrations. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I was got when you get into like vibrations and shit like right. that. That shit get deep. Damn. Yeah. That makes sense though. So shout out to musical geniuses. Was those only ones? 
We we grab, uh, we, yeah we we grab yeah. it. We, yeah yeah yeah. We, I mean Prince. I mean it's that's a lot. But I thought of Prince. Earth. I thought of Prince, Prince for sure. Yeah. I can't leave out Prince. Yeah. All right, Prince. I thought I was thinking yeah. of Prince earlier too. He's he's done some shit like in music, like I think like uh, dubbing. Mm. Like he's 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 done he's been he's been the the first to do a lot of things to like for sure. in recording and like for sure. just mixing certain sounds together right. and shit like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Prince definitely had an influence on the game. Little do niggas mm-hmm. know. Hell yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. All right. So listen, I got uh I got a couple questions for you. I saved the All best right. for last. I got some questions for you that's really going to involve some shit. All right. First Let's of go. which, first of which, we talked about a plethora of events that took place in your journey mm. as the producer that you are today. Mm-hmm. Out of all those times, all those lessons, what was the greatest lesson learned to you personally? Man, that's all. It's hard. That's all. I, I told you I had. It's, I, it's some yeah. shit. It's some shit. It is some shit. So, uh, Yo, just make sure you like know your business and like make sure you have people in your corner who really care about like your creative vision and like who you want to be as a person or a producer or an artist or whatever. And um, you know, make sure that's established. How do you tell the difference from those who you gotta, are and those who aren't? You it's a it's a learning experience. Mm. I think everybody is an OG out here. <laughs> Um, JR, shout out to JR. He told me everybody who's somebody in this game gets fucked. Mm. It's just how long and how hard. Damn. <laughs> so Damn. So like it's it's just you gotta you gotta work with, you know, this person and maybe hire somebody, you know, to watch him. You yeah. know what I mean? And you know, just just know your shit, man. Mm. It's very important. Damn. So it comes to it's a I mean, career we're talking about. It's, right, you know what I mean? This right. isn't just fun. Mm. Like when I was younger, I definitely thought it was just fun. And career involves money, taxes, and law. Yeah, bro. It's very <laughs> serious. It's a and, very serious business. And that's the most cutthroat concoction that you can create. Yeah. Damn. Know your shit, kids. Know your Make fucking it, yeah. shit. Get Stop serious. playing that way. All right, another tough question for you. <clears throat> I asked this to a lot of rappers that I have on here. I probably asked this three times okay. to rappers that I had on the Day by Day podcast. Having my first producer interviewee on here, mm. I can ask this and get the most purest answer. So I'm excited to ask this. All right. Top five DOA producers of all time. Top five. Cinco Donato, baby. Dead or alive. DOA. Um, it ain't got. You said order. producers, right? Yeah, producers, right. and it doesn't so, have to be in so order. Let me, let me say that it doesn't have to be in order. By the way, it does. It does not. Okay, it does right. not. It does not. Top five. I'm gonna say Lil John. Ooh, for me, for sure, bro. Niggas don't like, know. Everybody just know that. Yeah, I, nah. Yeah. Lil John definitely brought yeah. the South on the map. And he made the like to this day. Like that song, um, "Turn Down for What." That's just gonna play forever. Bro. Always. <laughs> like that's just. Gonna... And every club, every club in Vegas plays "Turn <laughs> Down for What" at least twice throughout the night. That's, that's just not going <laughs> anywhere, bro. You know. And um, shots gonna creep in there too. Okay? And you got to the window. To, he just of got course. classic, right? You know. Of course. So Lil John. Uh, Kanye West, of mm-hmm. course, bro. Mm-hmm. He made some amazing records, man. <sighs> records that have changed my life. Mm-hmm. Cha- you know, changed the way I thought of music. Name one Kanye beat that did that for you. Uh, definitely through the wire for sure. Oh, the shit. first time hearing that shit, bro, I was like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Niggas was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, I was, bro. I was, yo, this was like, this was missing. Yeah. This sounds good. This was yo, missing. <laughs> yeah, bro. It felt like it was missing. Like I that. was like, "What the fuck?" I was, I was like, "Yo, what the fuck is this?" Yeah. Oh, so if that's your, if that's the beat that did it for you, by yeah, then you're gonna love the doc, the documentary. Okay. I'm gonna just right. say that. All right, but we got. Kanye. I got a lot of favorite beats though. Like mm. you, you remember uh, "Down and Out" the Cam- Cameron joint. Ooh, 
baby. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Damn, damn. Mm, that beat was yes. crazy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That was okay. on the purple. Yeah, purple, purple haze. Purple zone. haze. Yeah. Yes. 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 Sir. Hell yeah. All right. So yay, Lejon. Mm-hmm. Gotta put Timberland in there. Timberland. Gotta put Timberland. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, bro. Oh. Um, I gotta do for real. Mm-hmm. Respect. And that's and this is my generation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like this yeah. is just what influenced those producers really right. influenced me. Right. Um so my last one, I gotta say Dr. Dre. Yeah. Those are great answers. Four of those five are on my top five. Yeah, gotta be. Gotta yeah. be. Yeah. Dre. And this ain't even Did you this... see the Super Bowl? Yeah. yeah, okay. Did you like it? Yeah, I did, yeah. bro. I like I the theme. I like the whole LA theme. I like yeah. how they had everyone on that. It was yeah. moving. It, it grew was... up in that, bro. Exactly. I love seeing that. Yeah. Oh, 90s babies. Yeah, for 90s, sure. 80s, crack babies. I was rocking. Everyone loved that shit. Bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> God damn. That shit. And then when Fifth pulled up, or I should say dropped down out yeah, of nowhere. That was crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. They did their thing, bro. Shout out to I was like, them, hold bro. up. This is it. Hold up. What the fuck? Yes, go, sir. They go. got to the bag. I'm like, yo, I ain't seen this shit since 03. <laughs> yeah. Nigga hanging upside down, singing in the club, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I fucked with that. And Mary shut it down, bro. Yeah, yeah. Auntie Mary shut it down. Yeah. And that's why I say Dre, man, because he's went, mm. he's captured so many elements, you know, music. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, I think Dre, I think Dre Pharrell. At least those two, and, and maybe even Kanye, have to be on everyone's top five. Yeah, Definitely. if you grew up how we grew up, yeah, and, you know, just at this era, you gotta say them. Definitely, like gotta I said, I got them. Dre, Kanye, Pharrell are on my top five. As yours, you said Tim. I'm kind of mm-hmm. taking the easy route out. I have to give it Tim slash Swizzy. Okay. I gotta do that. Okay. I gotta do that. I fuck with Swiss. Yeah, That's, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, fuck with Swiss. I, I couldn't earlier. I'm like, damn, which one am I picking? I couldn't think of one. And then it's only right because they both doing the verses right. thing. They are kind of like neck yeah, and neck though, when yeah, you think about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they doing the verses shit together. Yeah, true. And it only makes sense because these are two fucking legends yeah. of the same caliber. Yeah, yeah. So I had to take a cheat route. I got Tim and Swizz at four. Okay. So five. I want to know how you feel about this one. Five, I got Alchemist. Oh, man, yeah. Shout out to Alchemist, bro. Because Damn. I'm a huge fan of Freddie Gibbs, Damn. Currency, Griselda. Yeah. Action Bronson, those are some of my favorite artists. Mob Deep. Mob Deep. Like what niggas don't even know. It goes mm-hmm. way back to Mob Deep. It does. And Alchemist. It does. Yo, Alchemist. I fucks with Alchemist. Bro. Yo, Alchemist had a huge influence on me too. Mm. I will say that. My rat kit, I, this is the first time I ever said this on mm-hmm. The kick that everybody uses is mm-hmm. called a rat kick because I renamed it. Yo, it was a it's a kit that I had in my Fruity Loops called Alchemist. Mm. And it was kick number eight, I think. Remember it to the T. Yep. And um, I used to love Alchemist. I wanted to make beats like him, bro. Like, for sure, bro. Shout out to Alchemist. Yeah. That shit is it's crazy, man. I, I, sound was crazy. Like, it's literally, it's so fucking different, but hard. Yeah. I used to have, like, little um, Alchemist versus Just Blaze uh, mm. instrumental CDs and shit. Oh, I used yeah? to get them off LimeWire. Hell yeah. I bet that shit was very inspirational. Bro, what? I used yeah. to listen to that shit going to sleep, bro. <laughs> and it, on, a, on a jockey display, bro. Yeah, bro. That's what it takes, really. Mm-hmm. Living this shit. Breathing this shit. Eating this shit. Yep, you know what I'm saying? Fact. Seeing this shit, bro. That's what yeah. it takes. My man's went with the sleep mm-hmm. with the Alchemist beats playing. Yep, heat makers, Damn. No instrumentals, no Damn. vocals, <laughs> beats, loops. Right, hearing true components. Mm-hmm. All right, next next tough question I got for you. This is the last one, matter of fact. Okay. Lex Luger, your personal favorite beat by you, Lex Luger, of all time. Mm. And let's 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 do the let's do the crowd let's do the crowd in honor. Let's just scroll down some of the weaponry, right? That could easily be so. Whatever, okay. whatever, whichever ones are coming to your mind, say them. So, like we said before, the BMF with Ross, just about all but see, of. See, look, I told you a lot of them, like mm-hmm. a lot of records, I don't even like because mm. it because of the I, the mindset. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I didn't. So then, really, yes, truly, 
your okay. personal, like yours. Fuck, man. And as a producer, how many beats have you made? Like what, fucking thousands? Yeah, probably at this point, bro. It's God ridiculous, damn. bro. I get mad sometimes because like it's a thing, and I think all producers yeah. do it. So like, I go make five beats tonight. Mm -hmm. Those are my five that I'm going with. I'm mm -hmm. sending those out. Mm -hmm. So the last five mm -hmm. just get shoveled down mm -hmm. more and more. So each day I make five. Da, 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 da. So it's a continuous the, evolution. Yeah. So those beats get so old to me, I don't even think to send them out because I don't like them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I will. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because those are the ones that get bit, the ones I don't like. It's yeah. crazy. Damn. But that's why I say I like Stoner's Night because each one of those beats I love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with those beats, bro. Even to this day. Yeah. Those never got pushed down to the back of the line. Nah, those are like new yeah. beats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but all right, so best beat of all time. Your personal I'm favorite. Have, yeah, I'm going to have to say... Champions for Kanye, mm -hmm. the champions, right? That went platinum, by the way. Yeah, so yes, sir. Makes sense. Steady going, man. Shout out to the documentary. Everything's mm -hmm. just escalating <laughs> with that whole, you know what I mean? So just, when that happens, so I'm glad you brought that up. So being a part of something, being part of a creation, being part of mm -hmm. someone's music, mm -hmm. like how we said before with um, uh, um, the artist that uh, Curtis Mayfield. Okay. So Curtis Mayfield was a part of something that you partaked mm -hmm. in. So mm -hmm. that means he was a part of something too, right? So as the doc is going up, you said the numbers are going up. So then that increases your brand and your level as well, right? Yeah. So it reaches everyone involved? Yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It mm -hmm. gives everybody opportunity. Doors open up. You know what I mean? Because like, you see that trend. Like it'll be like after the, the verses with Kiss. Exactly. I mean, uh, Locks and Dipset, they mm -hmm. said afterwards, Kiss streaming numbers was out the ass. It's crazy, right? Mm. That's crazy, man. Yeah. It's, 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 and it's, it's, I, that's why I love music. It's the best shit ever, man. And like, because like, like Flavor Flav, mm. like, you know Flavor Flav. Of course. You know the clock. Of course. He could go viral tomorrow. Mm. Sales might go up. Mm. You, know, you know what I'm saying? People might go watch Flavor Love. You might be getting a back end on that. I right. don't know. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. But like that's it, the opportunities that always open up mm. when you're a creative. I, fu I fuck with, man. Damn. You know? That's definitely a delicacy. Shout out to DJ Khaled, too, man. I want to say this, yo. Yeah. I, I, yo, I, I fuck with DJ Khaled's Instagram. <laughs> I'll be on your Instagram, Heavy Khaled. Yeah. Facts. Yo, what do you like about it? He's very live. Very motivational uh -huh, to me. Very, very inspirational. Mm -hmm. I love it, dude. Mm -hmm. Keep doing your shit, man. I fuck with Khaled. And see, here's the crazy yeah, part. Really. Some people, it's some, it's some fucking dickheads that would take that as <laughs> him, being a, him being a dickhead. Yeah, you're right. Right? And yeah. it's like, yo, you don't get it. He could easily not say nothing at all. Right. Listen to what the fuck he's saying. Don't look right. at what, He's using what he got in the background as a fucking motivation. Yeah, topic. yeah. And niggas don't even peep it. Yeah. I can't. I See, I don't even think like that, yo. Like, and I, maybe I did when I was younger. You know, the hated. The, the, chosen, the ones, hater. chosen ones don't think like that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's, just, the, it's, the, it's the sheep that think like that. That's why they're the sheep. <laughs> true shit. I mean? True shit. Yeah. That should be funny to me too, man. Khaled mm. funny, you funny as hell too, man. Mm. Um, but yeah, like him, Puff Daddy, you know what I'm saying? Like very uh Master P is very motivational, inspirational. Mm. Moguls. Yeah, bro. I love that shit. Which one was the the top for you? Just outside of producing, which one was the top just whether it's uh music business music business person, whatever it is, that really like you could say, yeah, that's how it should be done. You name P, who's, I mean, a, a true, not a businessman, but a business yeah, man, like sure, him, bro. Jay. Jay, I say Jay. Mm. And he low key with it. He, you know what I mean? Not too flashy. I feel like he's not real too low key. Bracket. Yeah, that's what people don't even peep. He's real low key. Yeah. I be like, you know, I pick up the Forbes magazine every now and then. Mm -hmm. Had crazy articles in there. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, average Joe doesn't read nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, he done done. It was only right. 
I ain't drink on the, I ain't drink on the episode in a minute too. I'm gonna wipe that hey. up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wipe that by the way. <laughs> he done done. <laughs> That's it was only right gone. Now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what's up. Though. Yeah, got yeah, to. We got turned up, man. Got to, got to, yeah, got to. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm with, I'm with someone who worked with the likes of Juicy J. It's only fucking right, man. I appreciate it, bro. I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I grew up rolling up the Juicy J. Nigga, like, come real on, shit, man. It's only right. Shit. Um, yeah, hold for sure. Mm-hmm. Love his movement. Love the way he move. Yeah. The decisions he's made. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if he took any L's, he kind of just took them chin up. You know, it ain't you know people run to the internet and shit mm-hmm. nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah, I ain't never, I never see him do that. I don't. He doesn't have yeah, social no. media. Yeah, which is fucking genius. Yeah, it is. I wish, if, I, I wish I could have no social media. If niggas wasn't Damn. trying to like make money off this shit, niggas would not have a social media. Yeah, I bro. Promise you for sure, bro. I promise you. So I get it, but this nigga can do that. He, he you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, um, I, I definitely want to get to that point. I be right. telling my manager, like, PJ, I fucking hate social media, bro. It's bullshit. Yeah, bro. I can't stand that shit. Yeah, that shit was cool when I was young. <laughs> right, right. When you was having fun with it, it was cool. Yeah, but when shit too. started getting serious, like, man, this some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't even real fucking life. Right. Like, what the fuck is this, bro? Facts, facts. God damn. Yo, the older I get, the more I fuck with Jay. Old to now. And when I mean old, I mean young Jay to now. Um, like I even say, like growing up, always my favorite song was something off Blueprint, right? Recently, my favorite Jay song is the story of OJ. Okay. Which he made what a couple years ago. Yeah. And it has nothing. Is no type of correlation to OJ. Like this nigga. What's my favorite Jay song, man? What is it? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Nah, I like. Um, I think it's off the Dynasty. It's a. Uh... Oh yeah. Damn, what's that shit, yo? Is is myth and uh? I never change, it? never change is my shit. I, I think that's change, on the blueprint, change, right? Change. Yeah, that might be on the shit. blueprint. I think that's on the blueprint. It might be Bink. Yeah, producer Bink. Uh huh. From the seven five seven, bro. Here y'all, seven five seven producers um, go. Yeah, bro. He Artists. definitely got a couple off off blueprint mm. for sure. Mm. Shout out to Bink. He be on my ass, bro. Yeah. Yeah, he do. He be on my ass. I don't be picking up FaceTime and shit. He be mad. <laughs> Sorry, Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your favorite Jay album, The Blueprint? Uh, yeah, commercially. I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but that's a great fucking way to... The Dynasty, like, oh, okay. that shit is a gangster. I yeah. like that album, bro. Yeah. I think it that shows like Jay's... Hardcore rap skills. Mm. Is, is that the one? It's like black and white. It's like yeah. this on the cover. And yeah, it has a lot I think of, he got uh, like a bandana yeah. on. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. And it has Blueprint. a lot. Of, that has a lot of Memphis bleak and. Uh, yeah, it's BBC the gang up there for yeah, sure. Yeah, Blueprint is like um the, the singles. Yeah, I think H to the Izzo was on. It is. Yeah, H to the Izzo's on. That's there. a great album though. You don't. Lie. It is. Yo, I, I was have, cleaning up to that shit the other day. I have the vinyl. <laughs> oh shit! I really? have vinyls of shit that's, that's fire. personal. That's fire. And Blueprint is the J album. That's you know fine. what I'm saying? Like it's yeah, that shit go whole album. You can yeah, just play it through the whole thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, another one, an- probably second right behind that for me personally is the he had three values in my lifetime, right? Yep, I think so. In my lifetime, value. Damn, I forgot about two. Before, man. Hard knock life. Yeah, yeah, I remember with that with the black and white cover. That's yeah. my. That's right behind Blueprint for me personally. Yeah, that's just fire. Yeah, it's a lot of, I mean, it's just a lot of classic J and albums. And spitting game on them every time. He's elevating, elevating the culture more on each album. And again, Lex, like we talked about before, that shit goes over a lot of heads. Yeah. The reason yeah. why I, um, I like lately been putting a lot of Jay-Z on my IG and shit lately, if people have been peeping, mm-hmm. is because of this. It came to a debate, uh, the debate recently, Wayne versus Jay, right? Okay. So... Out of that came a lot of people mm. saying who Jay Z. And mm. when I say a lot of people, I'm talking about people born after whatever, 97, 98, mm. whatever, right? A lot of people, it's, it's a few that know because their parents raised them right. <laughs> but it's a lot of people that's like, Jay Z, like, what the fuck did Jay Z ever do? I even had an artist, I had an artist on here once that asked that on the show. He was like, I got a question. What did Jay Z ever do? Literally, right? What? So lately, I've been bumping a lot of Jay to, to, because you have to have a certain type of mindset to catch that. 
If you a hustler, you're going to love listening to Jay-Z. True, true, true. Young true. Jeezy. Yo Gotti. Yeah. Niggas that's laying down the blueprint yeah, that's going bro, on a that's, lot of heads. You got to elevate your... Yeah, bro. Yeah. You got to elevate yourself. It can't bro. always be about the beat and the, the yeah, cadence. That's a fact. Sometimes you got the substance. My fa- All of my favorite... Like, most of my favorite artists of musicians that I listen to were are hustlers. Like I said, Jeezy, Jay. Niggas that give me some fucking motivation. Yeah. Like, what the fuck am I listening to you for? I mean, if right. I want to listen to them shit that gets me, give me hype, cool, but I want some shit that's some motivation. That's right. Yeah, I definitely can fuck with Common. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, growing up, I made that switch. You just make that switch at a certain point yeah. in your life, I feel like. You know when, what I mean? When when was it for you? When did that switch happen? Ah, uh, man. I think my pops had put me on a, like, KRS-One. Mm. Um, maybe, like, 12. Yeah. I want to say, like, heavy, like, hey, listen to what he's saying, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then for him, it was KRS-1 and Rakim, mm-hmm. you know, but then, like, we talking about Jay, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, Pop, nah, you need to listen to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. Was he fucking with it? Was Pop's fucking with it? Oh, yeah, with it? yeah for sure. Yeah. To this day, man. Yeah. My Pop, he, he listen to everything I make, too. Yeah, yeah, Pop's <laughs> yeah. a real one. Yeah. Pop's a real one. Yes, sir. Shout out to the legend. All right, so listen. Um, fuck, man. Time is moving. 2020 was just two weeks ago. Yeah, time is moving. 2022 is here. But I just, I feel like, now fuck feel like, I know that 2022 is a very manifesting and move making moves for a lot of people that gets it. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So for you personally, what's to come in 2022? Uh, so right now, I'm trying to kind of like give back. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, just like do more for other people. Uh, so like I'm doing this mentorship program, and you know, work, I'm working with other producers, young producers who want to come up, learn some shit, uh, work together. You know what I mean? If they're good enough, maybe sign them. I don't know. You mm. know what I mean? So just uh just more of that, man. Just building more of an empire. Damn. Just stepping outside of just producing, you know what I'm saying? Right. Just doing more for other people with my skill. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's what's up, man. Salute to you for giving back, man, for real. Big salute. Yeah, okay. cause like I've been getting my plaques and shit like that, right? Mm-hmm. So that shit be making me feel like like I be feeling a sense of ego sometimes. Like I don't even like walking in a room, you know what I mean? And looking at the plaques, it just it made me feel weird. Yo, it's crazy. Mm. So I try to, like I said, erase that whole image. And mm. you know, uh, it's it's crazy you say that because it seems like for a lot of people with some type of imprint and something, they spread it. <laughs> like we talked about earlier with Einstein. Einstein could have easily. Not told nothing, not told nobody about the fucking theorems. Yeah, right, right, you're right. And shit, right? right? Easily. Yeah. But he passed it down. Hove, and the music that he makes, he yeah. passes it down. Yeah. So people with an imprint or just people who have a certain type of um, knowledge and experience like you and the persons that we named, I guess it feels like you would like, what, go crazy if you don't pass it down or yeah. you're a fucking dickhead. Yeah, right? you don't. Yeah, right. you're a bad guy if you don't. Bro. Right. Come on, don't go to the grave with that shit. Yeah. So yeah, all my L's, all of that, bro. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to put it out there so people can be, you know, can learn. Like, hey, don't do this. Do this. Maybe go this route. This is for me. This is not for me. You feel me? Right. Um, Salute, bro. Because I, I, I can honestly say... As someone who um, had older siblings, older my older brother, mm. older fam, older family members, uncles that did that, mm-hmm. told like they would tell me, "Damn, yo, I really, really wish I would have said fuck it and and went to college." Yeah, I and I have so. an opportunity to either go to college with football or say fuck it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, that shit stuck with me. Hearing that, I mean, who's to say if I didn't hear that, I might have said. I don't need this shit. Man. Yeah, true. And not saying I need it, but goddamn it helped. Right. And I can see what they was talking because I'm not. I'm not a fucking. I'm not a music producer. <laughs> right. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, so right. I don't have that certain trait. Right. Yeah. So being able to depend on it, 
I can see how helpful that shit is. But that really came from someone telling me the do's and don'ts instead yeah. of keeping it to themselves. Yeah, That's why that shit's shit so important. Yeah, they got to pass it down, man. Especially, you know, the color skin we are, bro. We got to... We gotta do better. You feel me? Always, you always know do better. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, that's another juicy J right there, bro. I think they got a Grammy for that shit. They did. I love Swerve. Yeah. The song Swerve on that. Yeah, song. yeah, that Swerve album was hard. Right. Swerve, man. <laughs> That's that shit. Niggas don't even hey, know. The Hustling Flow album, bro. Go ahead. That's bro. a great fucking movie. I watched that the other day for the first yeah. time in years. That's I was like, it. this movie was fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was inspirational to me. Very man. inspirational, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. Nigga really got it out the mud. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Shout out to Hustling Flow. Shout out to all the uh, viewers and listeners. Shout out to all the musicians, whether it's recording artists or producers, anyone involved in music. To you. Shout out to y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Because without y'all, it would be no substance for us to talk about what we talked about today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Shout out to all the, like I said, viewers and listeners, whether it's on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever. Day by Day Podcast is there. You're tuning in. I appreciate you. Salute. Make sure that you subscribe for every new episode. A big shout out to Lex Luger for popping through on the show. Allowing for yes, me sir. to pull up to the studio. You know what I'm saying? We live, we live from his element, right? And we shot the podcast straight like that. I really appreciate you, Brody. Sure, bro. For real, man. Big shout out. Locked to in. Te big shout out to Teddy for helping set this up. You know what I'm saying? Yes, been sir. been in contact yes, with the nigga the whole way through. Big shout out to my brother Mark appreciate for helping, you, you know what I'm saying? Even making the roots of this shit yes, be planted, sir. bro. My nigga Mark. That nigga been my brother since day one. You know what I mean? Solid nigga since day one. Shout out to all the solid niggas out there, man. For yes, real. sir. But for real, man, thanks for pulling up on the show, man. Oh, bro, no problem, bro. Anytime, bro. Truly, like I said, we locked in now. My Let's nigga. Go. Truly appreciate that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all a lot for tuning in. But until next time, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay, stay blessed. And second, most importantly, <laughs> stay fucking dangerous. It's crazy out here, man. Stay the fuck dangerous. Peace.